Vogue is out with their fall patterns. And we are going to take a look today, see what they've got for us, and um, kind of just assess what we see. Feel free to chime in in the comments section, either as we're going or at the end. But let's do it. All righty. So first off, we have this Mrs. Jacket and Vest from Marcy Tilton. Um, Mrs. Loose Fitting Below Hip Asymmetric Jacket and Vest have front button closing shaped lapped seams, stitched hems, A pieced stand up collar, and then B has a stand collar with folded front edge detail, long set in sleeves with slit. All right, let's zoom in as much as we can here. So if you're familiar with Marcy Tilton, you know she loves this asymmetry. She loves like you know, using the figure to create really interesting lines and seam details. She also loves to mix and match fabrics for her samples. So it's really cool. It's kind of like, I don't know, more of like art. Um, definitely more artsy in terms of fashion. But the overall look of this jacket is super cute. I love the kind of tulip hem that we have going on here. Um... I like that it's longer in the back and shorter in the front. I think that's very flattering. And button front, it kind of looks a little bit like a jacket, like a shirt jacket, especially in these lighter weight fabrics. We'll look at the fabric um, suggestions here in a second. But um, this uh, fabric definitely looks a little bit heavier weight. And then you've got the two different collars. Cute the way they styled it with these little flat booties. Love those. Here's the back, and again, we've got some kind of seaming happening here. With Marcy, it's really best to just kind of get to the line drawings. That's when everything is going to make the most sense. But this almost looks like a rib knit, even one that was, like, done on a machine. That's really interesting. You can see. I don't know if she um, refashioned this, or is this a vest? This must be a vest now. Okay. A little misleading, I guess. Yeah, okay. A vest and a jacket. Did it say that in the description? Anyways, this is what they're talking about with the pieced collar. Super interesting, super cool. Um, and then you have kind of the asymmetry, this curved line. You've got this thing longer than this one. Um, you've also got kind of like a princess seam going on here. And in the back, it looks like you've got some gathered seams and some pleats and pin tucks and all kinds of fun things going on. So it is a very interesting design. I just kind of had a vision where you would make the jacket version like this out of some kind of like boucle or you know, some kind of jacketing fabric and then this make out of a shirting and make it like a jacket over a shirt kind of layered situation. That could be really cool. I'm not a huge fan of like combining so many different fabrics. Um, not three of them anyways, <laughs> but one or two, I think it could be really cool. <clears throat> All right. So let's look at the back of the pattern. Okay. So brocade, quilting, cotton, lightweight <laughs> denim, and lightweight jacquard. Okay. Very interesting um, suggestions there. Quilting cotton. I mean, I guess, I guess if she would have just said shirting, I think that would have made a lot more sense. I don't, is she trying to tap into like the women who quilt and are a little bit hesitant to come over to garment sewing, but putting this in there makes them feel like they can tackle it because they're familiar with the fabric, maybe? I don't know. Um, and then we also have, the for the lining, lining fabric. And then down here is cotton flannel, taffeta, jacquard, lightweight nothing so I don't what is this does this belong up here or is so confusing um six buttons or five buttons depending on the version you're making the size ranges are 8 to 16 and 16 to 24 and then let's just jump down to B because A has all the different contrasts but B is one fabric so you're looking at yeah like two and a half yards for the largest size that's not too bad especially since jacketing can be a little bit pricey um, all right, we are not getting any finished garment measurements at all, so that's it. Cute, Marcy. 
Mrs. Reversible Coat. This is from Julio Cesar, NYC. He is also known for very artsy type stuff. A lot of like um, stitching as a detail, like embroidery stitches or something. And then always like panels inset into other things. Like making this would be a real <laughs> adventure. <laughs> Very loose fitting, reversible coat, has oversized funnel collar, I really like that, drop shoulders, side pockets, and appliques made from contrast and repurposed men's ties. How fun. So these are all men's ties. So interesting, right? All right, the shape of it is really great. You've got kind of like this cocoon look. Like I said, I love the funnel collar. The length of it is really interesting, especially whenever you keep everything below it one solid line like I think she's got tights and then these are like knee high like stretchy boots um that just looks so so chic to me here's the back another men's tie you could obviously you know bust out the scrap fabrics for any of these it I mean I would never have paired any of these fabrics together they don't necessarily match each other in any way and I think that's what makes them kind of so cool it would be one of those things where People like me who tend to overthink things would have a really hard time picking out all the fabrics here. Look, there's eight of them. So I think I probably should just keep my sanity and stay away from this one. But it is super, super cool and exactly what we want from Vogue, right? All right. So interesting. Okay, yardage. So... We are looking at cotton flannel, taffeta, brocade, quilting cotton, lightweight denim, lightweight jacquard, and then fusible interfacing. One thing that I don't think they showed us was what's the inside like. You know, if it's reversible, let me see the inside too. They didn't show that at all. Um, and then you need some yarn, five men's ties, and ten jumbo snaps. The <laughs> most interesting collection of notions. You have extra small through extra large all in one envelope. And yeah, it's going to be really hard to calculate, I think, all the different fabrics that you need. But you guys get the idea. It's definitely more of an investment, more of an art piece than anything else. Um, and then we only get the length here. I did want to go to line art and see if they showed us. No, they don't even give us a line drawing for what the reverse is like. Is the reverse just kind of solid and plain? I, I don't know. I wish they would have shown us that. Next, we have, looking at all these coats, I'm telling you, it is hot and humid here. These coats are like, they seem like years away, but I know that, you know, just, just a couple months. Um, Tom and Linda Platt. So I've made a Tom and Linda uh, dress before. Again, they like to do like, a little bit funky, a little bit artsy, but not as much as the other two. They're kind of like the Goldilocks. Mrs. Loose Fitting Unlined Cape has shaped neck and front bands, stitched hems, and mitered corners. Yeah, that's another thing that I remember from making their dress is that all of the finishes and the construction was very well thought out. Um, so you have a cape with these little pointed things. I think, is this separate? I think this might just be a panel here, a panel for the back. This kind of just overlaps, but it's not connected. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, it is long <clears throat> and even longer in the back. And you can see how it kind of has this waterfall effect here. So the wrong side shows. So you need to pick a fabric that looks equally good on both sides. They also burnt the fabric. Oh no. Either that or it's just a weird, you know, shadow from the light. But I mean, she's ready, right? Look at this power outfit. <laughs> like, she's like, let's go. Okay, so this, I'm right. This is just like an overlay over the arm. So you still have all the freedom to use your arms. That's the one thing I don't like about capes. It's like, I can't raise my arms. I can't even, you know, get to 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. <laughs> so restrictive. But this one seems a little bit better. I imagine the line drawings are going to look a little cloakish. Yeah, yeah, we're getting priest vibes. But 
So long as you stay away from those kind of colors that those um, robes typically have, I think you'll be fine. Then picking a solid purple, um, didn't I didn't think about that when I first saw it. Um, so that I think does say something. Um, all right, yardage, um, medium weight woolens, cashmere blends, and fleece. So yeah, all of these look the same front to back. So just make sure that whatever fabric you're using um, has the same sort of feature. Then we have all the sizes in one envelope, extra small to, ooh, well this makes me think this equal sign was supposed to be a comma. So maybe it is two different sizes. I'll look on the, oh wait, it's right here. No, all in one, extra small to 2X, uh, 2XL. And then, yeah, it's a little bit of a fabric hog, up to five and one eighths of a yard for the extra two X bell. Um, a little bit of interfacing. And then they're just giving us the length here. Yeah, can you imagine this? Even out of one of those like Pendleton wools, like out at a cabin somewhere, you know, sitting out by like a bonfire. Like I'm getting a whole vibe. This looks like Tom and Linda too. Yep. Totally. Um, I have attempted a dress like this before early, early on in my sewing. And I'm telling you, it is so much more challenging than it looks because you have all these concave and convex curves. So your machine is really like easing in here, doing a different kind of easing in over here. It's really misleading. You think that, oh, that's just so fun, which it is. Um, super flattering where they have the curves, you know, coming through here, giving her a defined waist over here, you know, t a dis like distracting from the hip through here. Um, and then we've got a really long princess seam, beautiful sleeve with like a narrow sleeve head. The colors are a little funky, funky, but I can imagine it in like gray and beige would be super pretty. Um, even if you wanted to make it a little bit more bright, you could do like pink and orange is always classic. And then in the back, we have a little slit. We have more full length princess seams. I'm trying to see if this is a two piece sleeve. I'm thinking yes, but I cannot confirm yet. Just, I mean, look how this hangs on her. It's just beautiful. Invisible zipper. So cool, right? Still, I'm stand corrected, I think, on the two-piece sleeve. I think we would have seen a line here. So no two-piece sleeve. All right. Lining, charmeuse, china silk, lining fabric, interfacing, and then um, cell fabric would be wool crepe, ponty knit. That's easy to work with. I mean, kind of so is wool crepe a little bit. Linen? Yeah. Gabardine? I think this is really um, attainable for an... They're calling it average. I would go a little bit more into the intermediate um, category just with all these curves. If you're not familiar with like princess seams and any of those things that have these huge deep curves, um, you would get like a lot of puckering and you'd just be like a little bit frustrated with it. But give it a go if you love it, you know, no way to know unless you try. Um, invisible zipper, hook and eye, and two small snaps. I wonder what those are about. Two small snaps. Hmm, no idea. Two sizes, uh, 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. And then one and three eighths of each of the fabrics that you need. The lining is only one and a quarter yards of lining. So that makes me think like maybe only the sleeves are aligned that can't be right sleeves and a facing maybe oh contrast lining left side well that's weird would you pick two different linings that's silly how confusing right oh man okay and then we have the length again All right, here we are with a super cute, like, PR girl fashion moment. I always think of the PR girls as, like, the ones who are doing, like, the real chic, real cute type of stuff. It's Rachel Comey, so that makes sense. Her brand is very in line with that. Um, Mrs. Loose Fitting Unlined Dress has back neck 
I'm sorry, bias neck binding, drop shoulders, three quarter length sleeves, ending in button cuffs with continuous lap opening, side pockets, top stitching, and frayed edge hem. How cool. Let's get in here. So they've chosen a corduroy. You can see they've got the bias binding here, very wide neckline, comes down, drop shoulder, and then you have just this regular um, kind of a little bit of a balloon sleeve. You have, oh, is that a thread? Um, you have this button cuff. And then this reminds me of another dress. I've made a dress that has pockets like this. I can't remember if it's big four or indie. I think it's big four. And I think actually it was a sweater. Um, oh, yeah, I made it out of like a light blue quilted fabric. I think it was pre-quilted. Um, oh, yeah. Let me know if you remember that. Um, but that is just a top. So this, I love that top. I It has like an asymmetrical hem. It's really cute. Um, and then this comes down and you have your frayed edge, which is just super fun. And then they paired it with um, these knee-high boots, which you can't see right now. And that's just a super, super cute look for girls' night, date night. So fun. Oh, and then the back looks like this. Rachel, I think she might have done it again. She might have done it again. I know some people are having, I see on Instagram, a little bit of an issue with fitting. Um, especially the last dress that she released in the spring. It was like peach colored. Um... So it might be a, a little bit of work, even though it looks like a very basic um, sewing job once you get all the fit things figured out. Um, but the oversized look can be daunting for some people, some figures. Um, okay, and here are the line drawings. Again, it's a really straightforward design. Not a lot to it. I almost wonder if I can't just hack the one I have <laughs> and make it into this. Um, I mean, I'm sure I could. It's just a matter of, do I want to do that? And also, I like to support the designers, you know, instead of just knocking off their thing. I don't know. I'm on the, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. <laughs> um, all right, corduroy, lightweight denim. So cute in denim. Linen blends, ponty knit. So ponty, I don't think would fray. So you just have like a raw edge. Um, so three cheers for no hemming. Um two buttons and then two size ranges so extra small to medium and then large to 2x and then the 2x calls for just shy of three yards of fabric a little bit of interfacing and then we've only got some unhelpful um finished garment measurements cute though i really like that one who would have thought brown corduroy could look so cute <laughs> if you had told me oh i made a brown corduroy dress i'd probably be like um but it's really cute. All right, we've got a Today's Fit by Sandra Betsina. Top has asymmetrical neck, front and back overlays. A has set-in sleeves with cuff. B is sleeveless, double-layered skirt, has elastic waist, ruched hem detail, and side seam pockets. So kind of a lot going on here for Sandra. I don't remember hers being so, like, hmm what's the word <laughs> patchworky but you have this cool asymmetrical neckline super cool you have french darts i think waist seam that goes into this little like peplum kind of thing and then under the peplum i think this is like a flap i think the flap hangs over i don't think this is sewn down so underneath the peplum up, sewn up here somewhere is a gathered skirt with a pocket and then these all come down to this elastic band, both of them. Well, there's a, oh, so there's three layers. So I think, wow. Okay. So I think in this seam are this fabric, this fabric, this fabric, and this fabric. So that seam is carrying a lot, but it is kind of cool. I think it looks a little long. Um, I mean, it fits her because she's probably like, six feet or something but then here's more of like a earthy tone version you've got a um, contrast cuff too yeah it is cool um 
again, though, it's one of those things where I don't know that I would ever be able to get it together with the fabrics. Oh, it's separate. I keep missing all these little details. So that makes a lot more sense. That makes a ton. I was like, how are all of these things sewn into this one seam? So the top is super cute by itself. The skirt is super cool by itself. Maybe I would just not make them together or not wear them together. Or I don't know. Um, yeah, there are our line drawings. Here's our yardage. So they're calling for drapey wovens or knits, round chalet, ITY, and jersey. Yeah, it would be really great out of that mid-weight um, cotton jersey from Style Maker, at least for like one of the solid panels. And then maybe you can find something cool in the, uh, is Joanne doing the, the cotton prints, cotton knits and cool designs yet? Um, you could do that too. Also, let me check on one thing. Yeah, there are French darts. That's interesting in a knit, but I guess it's knit or woven. So maybe you could do the, maybe it's like the top is supposed to be woven and the or at least the bodice is supposed to be woven and then everything else is knit. I don't know. That's when it gets real confusing because they don't separate, you know, what's what. But you need stay tape um, and elastic. Five and a quarter yards of one inch elastic. Whoa. And then, you know, um, Sandra has her own sort of um, sizing situation. So we've got an A through J, um, which is pretty standard for her. And then here are the fabric requirements. And no finished garment measurements. Interesting. Very unique. People will definitely be, you know, asking you about it, complimenting you on it. Okay. I think I must have seen this on social media on accident. Um, this is in-house design. Mrs. Dress has shaped empire waist seaming. Love that. Bias skirt. Love that. Peter Pan collar. Mm, are we doing that again? <laughs> Back zipper, um, purchase trim, short sleeves with button trim, separate uh, cup sizes. And then the sizes are 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. I mean, I, I think that what was happening here in the design room is that they were leaning into the 90s. I get that with the plaid and the black and pearl buttons and all of that. Very, very 90s. Um... That looks a little bit more modern. I just don't know about the collar. Huh. I mean, obviously, I could, you know, construct it where it gets left off. Um, It just feels a little bit... It still feels dated, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like, the 90s fashions coming back around again, I'm totally here for them. So long as they have something that's like feels like a little bit more modern, this feels like, hey, we had this pattern in like 92. Let's just redo it. Let's just, you know, make it again with no changes. And that feels a little bit strange. Here are the line drawings. I like it a lot without the collar. But even then, it's still not whoa, I have to have this, especially at Vogue's price point. All right, yardage. We've got medium weight wools, twill, PK, and jacquard. Um, hook and eye, zipper, flexible trim. Is there such a thing as non-flexible trim? I guess so. And four buttons. We went over the sizing already. Here are the fabric requirements. So it looks like the sleeveless version is just under two yards. Oh, but then you have to add a little bit for your collar and then even more for the other version. We've got a finished garment measurement for the bust line. And like they said, there are separate cup sizes for A through D. So we've got 34 inch bust up to 51 and a half. So, 
I mean, I guess that's nice for people who are fuller busted to have a pattern with this much kind of design and detail to it that they know is going to fit their chest. I just wish they didn't have all these little like extra things. All right, moving on to jacket and pants. All right, in-house design again. Mrs. Fitted line jacket has purchased braid trim, shaped side slits. I don't really know what that means. Uh, two piece sleeves, bust darts, patch pockets, and then the pants have semi-fitted through hip, have side front pockets, fly front, length variations, and C has grow grain trim. Complete this look with this trim. Ooh, this is interesting. There's like a link out to grow grain. <laughs> okay, I mean, way to try and cross promote, right? I'm sure this this site, Ofray, is owned by the big, big, big company that owns um, McCall's. Yeah, Design Group. Offre is part of the Design Group family of brands. And Design Group owns the big four. So, fun. Good for them. Teams communicating. That's what's happening there. All right. So, now is this the fabric or is this an extra trim? You can see the braided trim through here. I want to see these shaped side slits. Nope. Can't see them anywhere. That must be the fabric because I don't see any of that detail in here at all. Kind of Chanel-esque, obviously. The pants, they say, are semi-fitted through the hip, but those look fitted, fitted to me. Great shape in the back, though. The um, pockets are only puckering a little, little bit. She's not super curvy, though, but... Um, and then the pant also looks great. I like to see it on two different bums. This one looks like she's got a little bit of extra fabric through here compared to the other one. So she has like a flatter bum, um, but an easy alteration if that's the issue that you've got to. Oh, this is what they mean by shaped side slits. They're just curved and then open from the end of this trim. All right, all right, all right. Cute for a little crop jacket. I have a gazillion crop jacket patterns, but I'd hope the pants would sway me, but I don't think they do. Cute look, though. Yardage is medium weight wools, tweed, jacquard. Yep, all those, like, um, jacketing fabrics, but what are you using for the pants? I guess a medium weight wool for the pants would work, too. You need flexible braid, more flexible braid, <laughs> a zipper for the pants button, and then two yards of grow grain ribbon. Okay, um, fabric requirements for the jacket. One and a half yards for that jacket. This one's just a little bit north of one and a half yards. So that's pretty cool. Not much of a fabric hog at all. In fact, pretty decent stash buster. And the pants are two yards, two and three eighths. And this is if you are the largest size. As you go down, you can see, you can get the pants. That's the pants lining. That's a jacket lining. But you can get the pants done for less than two yards if you're on the smaller size of the size, size range. Um, and then useless finished garment measurements again. All right, next up we have this cute little jacket. Come on. Jacket and pants. Wow, okay. So, okay. All right, so Mrs. and Petite line jacket. Uh, has back yoke with inverted pleat. Love that. Bow detail. What? You know I love bows. Center back pleat, two-piece sleeves with button trim, front button closing patch pockets. Semi-fitted high waist pants have flared legs, side front pockets, fly front, stitched 
front crease, top stitching, complete the look with these with these buttons for A or these buttons for B. So now they've got us going to buttons.com and they're just the little mode buttons. You can get them at Joanne and part of the design group family of brands. So there they are cross um, promoting again, which I'm not mad at. Um, okay, let's take a look at the photos. So jacket first. We're back with the Papua or with the uh, Peter Pan esque collar. Um, I only say that because you know they did it in a contrasting fabric, so it kind of makes it stand out a little. I do think that if you made this collar out of the self fabric, then it wouldn't look like a Peter Pan collar really. And then you've just got the four buttons here, and it's open below that. I really like that. Um, the patch pockets seem a little low. Do y'all think so? Um, and then cute little, I think these are just decorative buttons on the side or on the sleeve. Oh, it's adorable, you guys. It's really adorable. <laughs> and the sleeve is actually more interesting than I thought. Doesn't it look like, now that could just be the plaid playing tricks on me. No, it's a two-piece sleeve, so there's actually a seam in here. So this might actually be functioning as something, I'm not sure. The back is adorable. We're not going to get any pictures of the pants. Wow. Okay. Well, they are basically flared pants, um, slash pockets, belt carriers, fly front, and then I'm assuming some fitting is done within these, but maybe not because that's just a um, that's just the crease. So maybe not but there are some back darts, just two of them. Um, let's go look at, see what we can find out about the pants, if anything. I mean, not much, especially standing the way she is. That leather they use though, looks really <laughs> chic. Um, Yeah, I wish they would have shown the um, waistband, but they're not gonna. Um, okay, so yardage, we've got medium weight wools, synthetic leather, stretch denim, twill. Yeah, I mean, obviously you guys were looking for, I mean, any bottom weight fabric is going to be fine for these pants, even some of your like suitings. Um, and then the jacket is just so cute. You can make it definitely from a twill. It'd be adorable. Um, interfacing lining fabric, <clears throat> buttons, zipper and buttons for the pants. Um, just two yards of fabric for the jacket at the largest size. We've got eight to 16 and then 16 to 24. And then a little bit of lining, actually quite a bit of lining. Almost the whole thing is lined. So that's good. Um, and then pants, two and a half yards, and you've got some pocket lining, interfacing, and that's it. So, really cute. This, These are the kind of Vogue patterns that I really, really love. All right, next up. Mrs. Top Skirt and Pants. <laughs> now this is an example of faux leather that I don't totally love. Uh, loose fitting line top <clears throat> has zippered funnel neck, drop shoulders, shaped hem, hem facings, sleeve variations. Semi fitted elastic waist skirt has shaped hem with hem facing. Semi fitted elastic waist pants have side seam pockets. Um. Yeah, I mean, a leather dolman top, oof. Um, it's kind of a lot. It's kind of just very specific, I guess. I don't know. Plus, come on. How that's got to be that had to be so hard for them to sew. 
Um, you had to have like special Teflon feet and all kinds of stuff. Here's a version that they made out of, what do you think this is? Some kind of sweater knit? And, you know, obviously it's a, just a totally different vibe. I mean, this looks like a, you know, casual pullover. There's the long version. I don't think they're going to show as much from the pants and the skirt. You can barely even tell that this skirt does have the curved hem, which is a cute detail. Um, and it said it was elasticized, right? So I guess it just comes, it's just plain. We'll look at the line drawings. Yeah, I mean, super simple, super straightforward here. Um, these are cute. I just think, I mean, the fabric on this one was fine. That made sense to me. The fabric on this, trying to make it, like, dressy, I guess? I don't know. Felt a little bit strange. I would have to, like, see a fabric and just, it would have to just come to me. But this is kind of a forgettable pattern, so I don't know that I would even remember. But this is cute out of, like, all those Sherpas and fleeces and all that kind of stuff. I think this would be really cute. What are they calling for? Let's look at the yardage. So synthetic leather, stretch wovens, wool flannel, and ponty knit. I feel like these three, well, maybe even the leather, they're all for the skirt and pants. They didn't even say, so are they telling me this is a wool flannel? Yeah, I guess so. That makes sense. But I definitely think you could use, like, the fleeces and the Sherpas and all of that. It just looks like, it just looks like that design. Even if you did it without the sleeve, even if you did the leather version in that, I think that could be kind of cool. I think. <laughs> Um, and then you need interfacing and lining fabrics. Zipper, buttons, elastic. The top is, uh, the uh, sleeveless top is one and three quarters of a yard. The one with the sleeve is two and a quarter yards. And then the skirt is one and three quarter yards for that skirt. My goodness. Why? I don't know about that. I would think you'd be able to get that un like under a yard. Or at a yard. Oh, but wait, look. So all the sizes, except for, we like double the fabric for the 2X? Man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine. I guess so. I guess if you can't place the fabrics side by, or the pattern pieces side by side, and you have to do them on top of each other, that's why it doubles. Dang. Dang, okay. Um, I guess if you could find a fabric that was a little bit, well, it says 60. I thought maybe it would say 55 or 58. Hmm. And then your pants are two and a quarter yards. Yeah, so not, not great, not terrible. Like I said, kind of unmemorable. Here's a little cute little number. This is Petite, oh, sorry, Mrs. and Mrs. Petite jacket and pants extra small to 2x so this brings up something interesting because in last week's video i was referring to people on the smaller end of the size range or even smaller than the smallest size on the size range as petite and a lot of people were commenting saying that that was a misnomer because petite only refers to like length you know um height situations so I went to Instagram to ask that group of people, you know, people on the smaller end of the size range, the double zeros in um, ready to wear, how they refer to themselves. And they agreed that petite wasn't necessarily accurate, but <laughs> a lot of them couldn't think of anything else. I got slim and slender being like the two like next best things. But it looks like the way that Vogue is referring to it is... Mrs. would be your straight-sized people, and then Mrs. Petite would be those smaller. And then women's is on the higher end of the size range. So confusing. All right, anyways, I digress. Mrs. Semi-Fitted Jacket have semi-fitted jackets. 
have separating zippers, raglan sleeves. A has contrast bands, pointed collar. B has a hood with a drawstring, grow grain ribbon trim on sleeves. And then there's also some pull-on pants, semi-fitted through hip, ankle length, pocket variations, contrast bands, elastic bands. Complete the look with this buckle. So let's see what they're recommending. <laughs> Then we're going back to buttons.com. Oh, fancy. Wow. Where do they want us to put that? <laughs> Literally, everything's pull on. Where do you put that buckle? All right. She's cute, though. I love, love, love like a bomber jacket, like a casual bomber done in kind of nicer fabric. I think that's such a cool look. Um, and then when you have like the matching set, that's just so, so right now to have everything kind of all matchy matchy. I love that it's like a suit, but way casual. And then here is the casual, casual version of it. Um, they said this was some grow grain ribbon. This one has the kind of elastic uh, band, which is, this is kind of long, which I don't love. I wish the elastic bands would be closer to each other. I don't like jackets that hit at my high hip. Plus this one's kind of like buckling too. Um, just a few, a couple inches shorter, I would prefer. But it also has the same detail in the um, cuff. Now I'm wondering if they're doing that with shirring. But you've got this nice big zipper. There's your little peek at the side seam pocket. This is all kinds of interesting. I don't know what's happening there. Um, and then more of the shirring at the bottom. Oh, and a hood. Here's the back. Very cute. This one's long too, you know. I'm assuming they're the same length. Raglan sleeve. Big, big, big hood. I don't know what they want us to put that buckle on. That makes no sense. <laughs> Where are you supposed to put that? No idea. But, yeah, it's cute. Like I said, I love, like, a fancy take on a casual design. So, they are recommending 35% moderate stretch fabrics. So, sweatshirt fleece cotton knit, interlock, and fleece. Yeah, totally. I'm assuming some kind of like stable French terry would be good. But I think this is probably a sweatshirting that they found a print in. Maybe. Um, okay, separating zipper, uh, elastic, grain ribbon, cording, an eyelet. So you don't need a buckle. I don't know what they're talking about with that. Um, so two envelopes, extra small to medium and enlarged to 2x. Your jacket requires two and a quarter yards at most. That's for the dressier version. This one calls for half a yard more, which I, oh, because of the hood. The hooded one um, calls for two and five eighths at most. Pants are two yards or two and a quarter yards. Again, what is the difference in the pants? I assume they were the same. The pockets? Okay. <laughs> uh, so the pockets require an extra quarter of a yard. All right, that makes sense. And then finished garment measurements, they don't give us any. So, all right, now we've got this top pants and slippers. So it's kind of like a lounge set. Mrs. Close fitting tops can be worn on or off the shoulder. Close fitting cropped pants have elastic waist, drawstring waist, slippers are lined. Okay. So. Yeah, it's really just like a bateau neckline with a grown-on sleeve that, you, like they said, you can put on your shoulders or off. Very simple. This is a beautiful, like, some kind of rib knit. The sweater, this immediately makes me, makes me think of the sweater rib knit from Stonemaker Fabrics. It would make such a cute little set. These things, um, if you want some, like, ready-to-wear inspiration, 
you can go and look at Kim Kardashian's line, Skims. I think that's what, I know the Skims is like the, the body shaping stuff, but I think that's where she also has her loungewear too. Um, and you can get an idea of some really cool fabrics that you can use for like maximum comfort, but still high style. And then you get the little slipper as well. The slipper is really cute. All right, here it is in more of like a fashion fabric, I guess. I mean, I don't know about wearing that like out to Target, but like, you know, if the exterminator came over, I wouldn't feel too weird. Oh, and then they had her put on those other pants. They showed the drawstring this time, which is nice. Yeah. Cute. Cute little set. Um, like nothing, you know, exceptional in terms of design, really. Just some basic stuff happening. But if you're looking for a, a little lounge set, this one is cute. There's probably tons of options, though. Okay, next up we have, I think we're moving into some shirts here. Mrs. and Mrs. Petite shirts. So Mrs. Petite is back, 8 to 16 and 16 to 24. Isn't that the same as, I don't know, it's all so confusing. Mrs. and Mrs. Petite loose fitting shirt, longer and back, stand collar, front placket with button closing, extended shoulders, long sleeves, pleated into cuffs, Shaped side slits, narrow hems, ruffles with baby hems. Complete the look with these buttons or these buttons. Okay, I don't need you to tell me the buttons anymore. Um, okay, I do love a ruffle. You guys know that. But a ruffle collar, it's a little Victorian for me. Um, maybe like one or the other, like this collar or this. I do love the hemline. Like I love how long this is in the back. I love like this, how deep this little slit is. Oh, here it is without any ruffles. Buttoned all the way up, which obviously you wouldn't have to do. You could also make the button width narrower. So instead of it being like two inch ruffle, you could just ping it down to even like half an inch ruffle and that would make it a little bit more wearable. Oh, and they put her with the leather pants. Yeah, and the shoulder is extended, but not by much. It's not a drop shoulder. And I feel like this line drawing really kind of misleads you into thinking that this front hem is longer, right? Excuse me. Okay. Um, yardage. Cotton shirting, chalet, linen blends, silk twill, and then some interfacing. So yeah, they're going for like, you know, a dress shirt. 8 to 16, 16 to 24 on the size range. 2 and an eighth yards for the like plain nerve version. And then 2 and 5 eighths of a yard for one with all the ruffles. And no finished garment measurements that help. Interesting. I just, it's just a little much. Like I said, maybe with a narrower um, ruffle. All right. Speaking of ruffles, we've got this little ruffled number. Mrs. and Mrs. Petite fitted top has bias ruffle detail, bias fold back collar, Bust darts, back button closure, self bias armhole facings. I guess it's a um, sleeveless version. B has long set in sleeves ending in a flounce. Okay, so. Oh, I see the collar like rolls over and then you've got all of this. That's interesting. This fabric feels a little heavy handed for this application. Plus it's two layers. You can see you've sewn them right sides together. So you've got two layers of it, which also feels like even your thinnest fabrics, you would have a really hard time 
This is more of a shirting, and I think the application of that is much, much better. Nice bust dart. I like the shape and fit of the armhole, and this is really cute. Let's see the back. Oh, buttons up the back. Wow. And then a little hook and eye right there. I quite like this. I like the sleeveless version better and or the ruffly version, but in a much different fabric, simply because the way that this gets constructed. I'm pretty sure you could, you could just hem this and you would just see some of your hems coming down, but That might be better if your fabric is a little bit on the, I mean, I say on the heavier side, it's still lightweight, but I guess heavier for a lightweight fabric. But this version is super cute. I could totally see myself wearing this. Let's see what the fabric requirements are. <clears throat> Crepe, chalet, broadcloth, and satin. So they don't even say that this is, this is definitely not a crepe maybe I guess maybe it's a broadcloth but it looks like a shirty to me um okay so top a sleeveless is two yards top b with the sleeves is two and a half yards you could also do this little ruffly thing in a contrast fabric even the collar in a contrast fabric like do the body in white and these two things in black how stunning would that be All right, super cute. I really like that one. That one feels new and different, you know, whereas that like, for example, the lounge set is cute, but it's like, it's not really that special. All right, Mrs. and Mrs. Petite top, uh, fitted knit top with scarf neckline, wrong side will show, raglan sleeves and stitched hems. A shirt with a scarf built in, okay. So you have a seam here, grown on. All of this is one piece. I can't imagine what the fabric requirements are going to be for this. Um, and then just your stitched hems. Here it is in more of like a sweater knit. That's kind of cool. I like this, which is, I don't like this color combination. Like, God, it just feels so old or something. I don't know. But the yellow one is really cute. Here's the back. Again, just the raglan sleeves and then your scarf wrapped around. I would also love to see it with the scarfs undone. But they're not going to show that. I like this. I think this is really cool. Um, definitely more of a fan of everything made out of the same fabric and not doing color blocking. I think if I were going to do color blocking, it would be like neutral on neutral, you know, white and cream, pink and gray, you know, things like that. I mean, red and purple, like where, where are they seeing this red and like the, and with the um, pattern earlier too, that had the really, the curvy one that had all the funky colors. Okay, um, moderate stretch knits, 35% stretch, ponty knit, and sweater knit. And then everything's in one envelope, extra small to 2X, 2 and 5 eighths of a yard, yeah, and then B is 2 and 3 quarters of a yard. Yeah, that makes sense that you would need almost 3 yards for these. Oh, wait, yeah, sorry, top A also has the contrast, so this is the all-in-one. Um, which takes less fabric because the pattern Tetris about how you get all the pieces together, you can smoosh them up differently than you would whenever you have to use two separate um, yardages of fabric. So this is more economical, but yeah, almost three yards. That makes sense. That makes sense. I could totally see myself making and wearing this. This is a good one. We're hitting a stride with the tops, I think. All right, Mrs. Sweatshirt. Mrs. Oversized Sweatshirts, raglan sleeves, hood with drawstring cord. A has an exposed zipper, front pocket, 
ribnick cuffs and hip band. I hate the hip band. B has an elastic sleeve hem and drawstring hem. All right, so they made theirs out of some kind of, I mean, really pretty, like, silky fabric maybe? But it is a half zip raglan sleeve <coughs> with a collar, I mean, with a hood. And then the kangaroo pocket, um, they might have even used, I mean, this could be a rib knit, could be ponty, something like that. This to me is like I, pear shapes. I know you agree with me. This is hard for us to pull off. Very, very hard for us to pull off. So I would just consider like a straight hem. And then here it is just like as a sweatshirt. Odd thing for Vogue, right? Like, doesn't this feel a little bit, I don't know not Vogue-ish. <laughs> I mean, I guess this one with the fabric is a little more Vogue, but that's just a yellow sweatshirt. Like, you could get that from any of the other big four. Here are our line drawings. The shape of it is really good. I know that it's very big and oversized, um, but with, like, biker shorts being a thing, um, you could even wear it over like little cutoff shorts in the fall. That would be really cute. The sort of oversized like top, oversized jacket, top, whatever you want to call it, um, sweatshirt with like little shorts or tight shorts is really kind of cool. And then you wear it, you know, with your dad sneakers or, you know, whatever. And you look like a Gen Zer. <laughs> Which is just my goal in life right now. I want to look like a Gen Z person as much as I possibly can. <laughs> um, so again, 35% cross grain sweatshirt fleece. So maybe this is a sweatshirt fleece. That's really pretty. Oh, but then you also have, what is it? Oh, so confusing. French cherry fleece and ponty. And then rib knit. And then these other, <laughs> this other fabric down here. I don't know. Um, cording eyelets, zipper, and elastic. All the sizes in one, extra small to 2x. You need two and three quarters for view A, which is the yeah, the um, printed version. I'm trying to think why you need so much more for that. Because or why you need so much more for B. Because sweatshirt B has 60, um, sorry, has three and an eight. Is it because it doesn't have the contrast? Yeah, it doesn't have the contrast cuff. Maybe, I wouldn't think that would take up that much fabric, but the hoods are the same, sleeves are the same, length is the same. Maybe the length is not the same. Where's that cover? Okay, yeah, this one's shorter. Not by much, but it is a little bit shorter. Okay, so there you have that. And then your contrast um, rib knit, just a half a yard of that. All right. Got a lot going on outside right now, if you can hear. Got a, a dog barking and a siren. <laughs> so bear with me. But we have the pants that they have paired with these shirts that we've already seen. I love that they're doing that, showing us like how to combine the patterns together. We have Mrs. and Mrs. Petite slightly tapered cropped, I don't know about that, cropped pants, high-waisted, pleated front, side front pockets, and fly front opening. Um, these are not cropped. <laughs> I don't know what world you're living in where a six-foot-tall model's cropped pants are hitting her at the like below her ankle <laughs> but you do have a high waist with um pleats and then this fun little like sashy belt I don't hate that I don't I just do not like this top I think I've just it's a no yeah look how much better sleeker this one is sans belt and you can kind of see it's just a little bit more cleaner all around. There is quite a bit of thigh 
room, right? Or is this the crotch? Because if that is the crotch and it comes down to here, we have got a big problem. <laughs> no, her crotch is high and tight, way up in there. She needs more fabric here, but... Oh, bless it. And then she has too much fabric. So I don't know what is happening on the front of these. I'm very, very concerned looking at this crotch from the front and the back. It looks super cute in the line drawings, right? Like, love it. I love the thick waistband. I love high waist. I love the pleats and the darts. I love everything about it. But looking at these photos... There would just, I think that there would be a lot of work to be done, which is not bad. It's not impossible. It's just, you know, going into it. Don't think that this is going to be one of those things you can just whip out on a first try. Um, I do not know what's happening here. And again, it's not cropped. I mean, to me, cropped would be an easy six to eight inches shorter. So I don't know if that's not supposed to be in there. They should have just said slightly tapered pant and that's an accident. I don't know. But yardage. Wool gabardine, crepe, lightweight denim, wool flannel. And then fusible interfacing and lining. 8 to 16, 16 to 24 in the size range. A zipper, hook and eye closures, and then B has the D ring for the sashi belt thing. And then the planer version, well, they're both two and three eighths of a yard. They're the same. And then pocket lining is just half a yard. All right. Could be better, could be worse. <laughs> Maybe could be worse. All right, now we've got what they're calling track pants. Um, semi-fitted, tapered, ankle-length pants have drawstring waist with elastic, utility pockets, and contrast cuffs. A has a contrast lower leg panel. Oh, man. Um, this is just bizarre. Like, I get a patched pocket, but we couldn't have brought it up to the waistband. Like, that's just strange. Um... Fit through here is okay. They're also, they're sitting like a good inch or two below her waist. So a little bit of a lower rise, or I guess we would call it a mid rise. The panel's cool. I don't have anything against the panel. Here they are in all white. Love it a lot more. But this is so strange to me. Like, why wouldn't you just sew that into the waistband? I have no idea. You also have a lot of seams, which I, obviously, with the last pair, they're there, but it just didn't, I don't know. It stands out more in a way, which is so odd, but it stands out more in a way on the, when they're all one. So you have this seam going down the front of your leg. So nice, elongating, all that. You also have this seam here, which was what created the inset panel. So you have like a little inner thigh thing happening. And I think there's a seam here too. Can y'all see that little line? Here's the back. The fit in the back looks pretty good. Nothing weird or funky going on there. Yeah, I mean, I like a dressy jogger. I really do. So that's a no. There's not a seam down here. But tell me it doesn't look like it. Even on, was this the first one? Yeah. Let me zoom in again because doesn't that look like a seam right there? They added length, right? I'm not losing my mind. There's a thousand percent a seam there. A horizontal seam going across. So they must have made it, realized it was too short or something, and then just added this in. Odd.
You guys, am I losing it? Either that or that line got left off of the line drawings. But you cannot convince me that there's not a scene down here on the sample versions. Um, yeah, I like this. I would definitely just add whatever you need to this to get this into the waist seam. I see no reason for you to have to like make that little baby him there. Um, like at all. So I would, that's the only change I would make to this. Otherwise, I think they're quite cute. I think this could be also cool in like a sheer, you know, like mesh or something if you wanted to like make it kind of like street cool. But I love a dressy jogger. So that's probably where I would head with it. But we have 35% stretch knits like jersey, ponty knits like a lightweight ponty, sweatshirt fleece, and velour. And then cording, elastic, and eyelets. All the sizes in one, extra small to 2X, um, 1 and 3 eighths of a yard. And then if you break it up to do the color block version, you need one and a quarter, one and three quarters of your self fabric and three eighths of your um, contrast fabric. So quite a bit more to do this detail. All right, now we've got a little bit of lingerie, petite robe, belt, camisole, slip, shorts, and pants. Wow, it's all in one. I mean, literally everything you need. <laughs> um, loose fitting wrap robe has raglan sleeves, side seam pockets, shaped neck band, belt, and self loops. Camisole and slip have narrow shoulder straps, neck and armhole facings, lace trim, close fitting elastic waist bias cut shorts, semi fitted elastic waist pants. Applied purchase trim. Wow, she looks so glamorous. So, I mean, yes, there are days I would lounge in this all day long. And just look and feel fabulous. Cute little set. There's the, what are they calling that? slip <laughs> um, and here's the camisole with the pants I love that set oh cheeky cheeky shorts really nice simple basic but you know really like makes a statement here are all the line drawings I don't see why you couldn't wear this out you know you make it in like a bright color and a fabric suitable for fashion fabric cute um, satin charmeuse batiste crepe de chine lining fabric, interfacing, and then, so you need six and a half inch double edged scallop lace. I think it's pretty much just top stitched on. That's actually not that hard to find. Even I think Joanne has some. Um, and then just some elastic. <clears throat> so your two size ranges. Quite a bit of fabric for that robe, five and a quarter inches. And the camisole is a little stash buster. The slip, eh, three yards for the slip. Um, shorts, so the shorts and cami, two and one eighths of a yard all together. That is a great little set um, that you could really use up some fabrics on. And then your pants are two and a half. And these are just widths. All right. So that is it. We're not going to review the men's wear. Oh, wait. It is women's wear. Hold on. Unisex shirts. Okay. But they put the dude up front. Unisex shirts have button down closure, pointed collar, side hemline slits, chest pockets with flaps, long sleeves with button cuff and placket, chest pockets, short sleeves with band, purchase piping. Okay. 
So, a little like notched collar. These are the chest pockets with the flaps and your button cuffs. And you've got these little slits here. This doesn't feel very manly to me. Um, here they have her in those joggers that I liked and are kind of going for the whole like pajamas as streetwear thing. Um, so they did all the piping. This definitely looks like a pajama shirt. But you could also wear it out. Oh, those aren't the joggers, but they could have been. Okay. Well, not really much to say about this one. Again, it kind of feels like, eh, let's just throw this in. Rayon, rayon blends and cotton shirting, 11 buttons, five buttons, piping, one and an eighth of a yard for shirt A plus this contrast. Shirt B that the girl is wearing with the short sleeves is only two yards though. So, okay, well, not much to say about that. It's pretty straightforward. All right, so that is Vogue Fall. 2021. I was trying to find the lookbook. <clears throat> so we can review. Um, so I think that they had some really interesting patterns. Um, love the Rachel Comey. Some interesting details in this one, although still I feel like picking the fabrics would be a little bit overwhelming. Um, loved this little crop jacket. Some really nice pieces in here. The tops are what's really standing out for me the most. Whoops. Um, this top especially, also this top, I probably will definitely end up grabbing those. And I really kind of liked this situation a lot. I have to check my stash to see if I have something similar because I believe I do. But the fabrication of this is really inspiring. Um, anyways, let me know what you guys thought of the collection. Um, still very much on brand for Vogue with, you know, all the demographics and, you know, kind of everything about how the women are styled and all of that kind of stuff. But it does, in some parts, feel a little bit more youthful. Um, but at the same time, a little less high fashion. So curious to know what you guys think. Let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today and I will see you all very soon. Bye!